Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out Ubuntu 2204 Jammy Jellyfin. So let's get started. Now we're going to be testing Ubuntu out on my Zima board. And if you guys are not familiar with this, I will leave a link to the review over here. But just for a quick recap, this is running an Intel Celeron 3450, um, 1.1 gigahertz at 2.2 boost, 8 gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC, which it doesn't matter because I'm going to be using an external SSD. It also has an exposed PCIe X4 port and also ability to support two SATAs at the back. Yeah, again, if you want to know more information about this, I'll leave a link on the top left over here. Now I'm testing this Ubuntu on the beta version, which really doesn't matter at this point because it's a week before it released. So between now and then, not much changes will be made other than like bug fixes and stuff like that. The kernel's already frozen. This is how it's almost going to be like. Now I haven't tested Ubuntu 22 yet this is like almost the first time i'm checking this out so i popped it into my ventoy and this is a special release of ventoy called media cat if you guys ever use it it's actually a pretty good stick that actually you know does antivirus and all this other stuff but yeah i'm gonna boot into jammy um technically i could have done an oem install i've been doing that a lot you jump into an OEM install so you don't have to go through a lot of menus over here then once it's done installing that's when they'll ask you for username passwords and stuff like that Oh, nice. I like this part already. This is pretty cool. The new shell or the new dash or the new boot up screen. I really, I really like this. It's got a very clean look to it. Uh, it doesn't use the BIOS um, uh, logo in the middle like they usually do. So I really do like it like this. I wonder if the boot up screen is going to be the same because this is just booting into the installer. Okay, I could see my default mouse and I could see the jellyfish in the background. I like this wallpaper. Audio works right off the bat. I'm going to install Ubuntu. And let's see the installation process. Normal install, minimal download updates. You're going to download third party like Wi-Fi hardware and stuff like that. Cool. This is standard. This is actually they have not changed this from any other version. It looks exactly the same. I think the only time that they changed this whole thing was 2004 when they added the ability to make user accounts through AD. That's the only time that I remember this kind of like changed. Otherwise, it looks exactly the same as before. Uh, let's see, install Ubuntu alongside. I have something in this disk already, so let's erase everything. In advanced features, you have LVM, Ubuntu install, or erase this to ZFS. I'm just gonna keep that as none, continue. Uh, that's the drive I don't want to install in. I'm gonna install it in the 120 gig. Advanced partitioning tool, install now. Okay, what I don't like about the installer still compared to Arch Linux or Manjaro is that it doesn't give you the control to select hibernation. Anytime when you want to do hibernation on a laptop or something, you need to cut out a partition um, similar size to your RAM. So if you got 8 gigs RAM, you need a partition that is 8 gigs so your hibernation file could jump, like be stored in there. So Ubuntu ha for a while now has not had that option. But if you go into installing Arch or Manjaro really, you can actually choose if you want hibernation or not, which also will partition the drive for you. One thing that's missing from here. I would like to see it happen. Uh, I'm just going to call this Don Zima. And something simple. Log in automatically, use Active Directory if need to, continue. Um, since I'm installing off USB, it shouldn't take that long to install. A couple of minutes. All right, we are done installing. Um, let's see the first boot, if they actually retain the logo, because I actually like that boot up screen. Oh, it did. Excellent. I actually really like it. It looked very clean on a laptop or something like that, where at the screen, you'll see the Ubuntu logo. And maybe, since usually it's Plymouth, you might be able to change that easily to something that you want. Now the install process took about 10 minutes, I would say, maybe a little bit less. It wasn't too bad. Uh, it would have been a little bit longer if I had to download all the additional stuff like the Wi-Fi drivers and all that other stuff. But um, yeah, I just had it, the default installation. Uh, right now we're just booting it up for the first time. So before I jump into anything crazy, uh, let me answer these questions and see what the storage is like system oops why is stuff still moving around system monitor let's see resources 
Okay, so on first boot or fresh boot or fresh install of anything, it seems to be using about 1 to 1.1 gigs of RAM, which is a little bit more than its predecessor on 2004. I believe when that was first installed, it was about 900 megabytes. So it wasn't, it's not too much um, than it was before, but it's still using about 1 to 1.1 gigabytes of RAM on fresh boot. And let's see, file system. And used about 9 gigs of storage just to install this uh, fresh install. So that's not too bad. I mean, Windows is like 20 gigs or 19 gigs just to install. This being only 9.8 or 10 gigs almost, that's not that bad. So a couple of things you might notice, um, new wallpaper, uh, they kept, this is the new GNOME. So this is GNOME 42. And they have now the desktop spaces up on here. And then all the icons down over here and then the search bar. So they got rid of the frequently used menu when you first boot up. Uh, got a little bit of updates already. And they still retain the actual utilities. And then sliding that way or sliding this way, you can see like little banners over here. So that's not too bad. Um, let's go into system settings because they changed some stuff over there as well. It's probably in utilities. Let's see. It is not. Oh, right here, settings. So in here, what they did change, um, if you go down to things, Background, I do like this new background. I actually really like the new logo. This new logo right here is really cool. I really do like it. I like that they did include this because back before they didn't have like these uh, vector art logos. So that's pretty cool. They have pretty nice wallpapers over here. That's not too bad. Uh, appearance, uh, this is the new thing that they added. So you could go into light mode and then change the accent color, but also changes the folder icon. So if you take a look at this files and I say I want to use green, so now it's green and the folders change as well as far as and all these accent colors. And if I open this up, everything inside there changes as well to green, like this desktop, this one. So that's pretty cool. Now, this is also using a mixture of GDK 3 and 4, I believe, and mainly GDK 4. So there are actually not much themes out for this. So if you're planning to customize the new Ubuntu 22.04, you're going to have a hard time trying to find a lot of resources for GTK4. Especially, I, there's a couple of things that don't work. Actually, a lot of things that don't work, which is their extensions, which I heavily rely on. And yeah, a lot of the ones that I use don't really work that well. So you can't even install it. That's the problem. All right, going into notifications. This hasn't changed at all. I think it still comes up from the middle. Uh, multitasking, now you can actually use the edge of the screen. Oh, they actually have a full menu for this now. Hot corners, dynamic workspaces, and you can change all this. Okay, that's pretty cool. Applications, ooh. One thing that they did include, which is their new screenshot program. I'll show you right now. This is their new screenshot program. Once you hit print screen, it, you could actually select this and it has this. I really, really like this. Now I don't have to use a uh, flamethrower anymore, but this is really good. You can capture a picture or capture a video and then by selection and then you just hit this to capture it and there you have it. It's captured and it's in my clipboard so I could actually just paste it anywhere I want. So that's one cool feature that I really like, the new th um, screenshot application. Moving down here, Thunderbolt screen, nothing really changed. Um, privacy, that's where I was at. User online account where we were in the beginning. Sharing. Um, I did have run into a problem with sharing screen before on the beta release before the 2204. So I did t touch on GNOME 42 with the screen sharing program and it does have a weird, I hope they fixed it, but what happened is um, they had an issue with I think the key ring or something like that. So it wasn't working very well using screen share. And that could be primarily because I'm logging in without typing in my password because it's automatic login. Um, I hear that that might cause an issue. So I haven't really tested that much, but yeah, um, this seems to be the same as before the menu. Nothing has changed over here. Sound system. Yes, you could still change everything. The balance is left and right. Um, sound system. Okay. They still don't have the ability to flip the inputs. That's one thing that I've noticed um, this version and other versions. When I use headphones, sometimes I want to flip it to the other way because where the cord is and this doesn't have that option either. Uh, shows my battery power on my keyboard and my mouse. Power mode, screen blanking. Okay, this is standard. Display settings. 
I think they have fractional scaling all set up. Oh yeah. Oh, now you can even get up to 300%. So if you wanted to blow it up really big, you could actually do up to 300%. Uh, so this is pretty standard. Mouse and touchpad, okay. I don't have a touchpad, so the other options aren't coming up. Keyboard shortcuts, alternative keys, okay. Printers, you can add printers now. Removable media, same. Color, same. Region, accessibility. Um, yeah. If you see any glitches on my screen right now, I think it's because the connection between this guy into my uh, HDMI recorder, that's having a little bit of issues. I was running into this earlier and it has nothing to do with the software itself. You see how it's glitching a little? I think it has to do something with the um, HDMI recorder right now. I might have to look into that, but otherwise it seems, oh, you got mouse keys, locate pointer, click assist, user. I like this new icon. I like this now. I looked at it originally not too long ago and I didn't like it. I was like, why do you need that extra room? But now if you look at it, I think it's growing on me. Pretty much standard all the way. It does use Wayland now instead of X11. So you're not going to get, it's going to be way better performance in far as graphics. Uh, GNOME version 42. And that is about it. As far as software goes, not much software has changed. It feels a little pretty responsive that I'm using it right now. The only thing that they added was that screenshot program. I think other than that, not much has changed. If you wanted to see what you could do, I don't think it's in here yet. Let me see, software and updates. Is it in here? The new software center? No, it's this one, Ubuntu software. Um, they do have their GNOME. Yeah, I don't need this one. I need the other one. Let me go into terminal real quick. Maybe I could find it in here. Let's see. GNOME extensions. Let's see if that's going to work. Mm, no. Wow, actually their software works pretty quick. Why is it not in here? Because you could do sudo app install GNOME ex Oh, it's not GNOME extensions? No. Wow, I can't remember the program. Why can't I figure it out? See, that's one of the things. Like, it should just be easily searchable. So GNOME has their own extension programs that you could see what you can enable and disable. So you no longer need to use GNOME tweak tools. And I can't even find the program myself here. So you do app, you know, app, cache, search, extensions. Ah, there you go. GNOME shell extension. Is it manager? Let's find out. I think it is. Aha, there you go. So you could actually search for these extensions and these are the ones that work. So you don't necessarily need to go into the website, the ex uh, GNOME extension website, and you could browse directly through here. Um, not all of them install, so you would see it's unsupported. So if I wanted to use say, okay, caffeine does install. That's actually new. It didn't work before, but if I wanted to use dash to panel, uh, I could install this from here and these are the updated versions of it and you'll see like which one doesn't work, which one does work, etc, etc. So no longer you need to go into the web browser to find all this stuff, which is something I do like. I think the old extension might have had it too. One of the big programs I do use is Freon, which Freon doesn't work over here. Uh, you could probably find something else um, that could replace Freon, but I really do like using Freon itself. But yes, I do like this new extension manager. There are some extensions that I do normally use that this doesn't support, but 
Otherwise, I could browse through here and get what I need. Um, by clicking on here, I'll actually give you more description. Okay, that's the that's a bad example. So let me go to the dash to panel and click onto this one. You'll see how it looks. You see, like it'll give you a screenshot, what it does, what version it supports, and then you could just install it right away. That is it for me, guys. I mean, brief overview of this. They haven't changed much from 21.10 and only the biggest upgrade would be GNOME 42 as well as in installing that new screenshot program. That's Those are the two things I really like. Um, there are still a lot of unsupported extensions that I tend to use, so I'm kind of staying away from it until that gets supported before I load this onto my laptop and use it as a daily driver. Otherwise, if you guys are interested in playing around with this, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below to where you could get this beta version. But it releases on the 21st, so about 10 days from now when you're watching this video, you'll have the full release candidate version of 2204. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, leave it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.